Do you wanna make your YouTube videos more interesting, more dynamic? Of course you do. Then you're gonna to wanna to stick around for the rest of this video because I'm gonna show you how to use iMovie on the Mac to create two extremely popular YouTube editing tricks. All right, here we are in iMovie. I'm using iMovie version 10.3.2 running on Mac OS Monterey 12.3.1. And I have an on-camera clip on the timeline and I've placed markers where I want to make my edits. You place markers on the timeline in iMovie by hitting the M key on the keyboard. All right, the first type of YouTube editing trick we're gonna create here in iMovie is called the zoom cut. This is when you cut from one shot to a closer version of the same shot. The zoom cut is typically used to emphasize certain dialogue in an on-camera recording. The zoom cut is also really good at masking jump cuts. To create a zoom cut here in iMovie, I'll first locate where I want to make the zoom cut, and that will be right here at this first marker. I'm gonna zoom cut from this line of dialogue here, and that is to this line. The inability to be I'll zero in on the beginning of the line by hitting the keyboard shortcut command plus a few times to zoom into the timeline. And looking at the waveform, I can see where the dialogue starts. And if I scrub along the timeline, to be I can hear the dialogue starting. To be now, if you're not seeing waveforms, go over to the top right of the timeline and select the settings button. In settings, go down to audio and make sure show waveforms is checked. Likewise, if you're not hearing any audio when you're scrubbing on the timeline, go up to iMovie's top menu and select view. And from the drop down menu, select audio skimming. You can also turn on audio skimming using the keyboard shortcut shift S. So with the scrubber bar on the spot where I want to start my zoom cut, I'll split the clip at that spot using the keyboard shortcut command B. Then I'll find the spot where I want the zoom cut to end. That should be at the end of this line right about here. I'll split the clip again at that spot using command B. And now I have this new clip that I'm going to zoom into. To do that, I'm first going to make sure the clip is selected by clicking on it. Then I'll go up to the tool menu above the preview window and select the cropping tool. And down in the style section, I'll select crop to fill. And I get this bounding box around the clip in the preview window. I'll click and drag on the corners of this bounding box. This sets the size of the crop. Then I'll select the blue check mark over on the right. And the clip is cropped to the bounding box and anything inside the bounding box is blown up to fill the screen, giving you the effect of zooming in to the clip. Let's see what this zoom cut looks like. I'll scrub back on the timeline and hit the space bar to preview. And that is the inability to be... And there it is, the zoom cut. ...sound on your Mac. I mean, you can... Let me give you a couple of tips to help your zoom cuts work a bit better. The first tip is to not crop in too much on the shot. An extreme crop in can be uncomfortable for the viewer, especially if they're prone to motion sickness or vertigo. I learned that from a viewer comment. Cropping in too much can also reduce the image quality of your clip, depending on what resolution you recorded your video at. If you typically upload videos at 1080p resolution and you plan to do a lot of cropping in, you may want to record your original video at 4K resolution to save image quality, because when you crop in, you're essentially blowing up pixels. Another tip for better zoom cuts is to align the subject's eyes between shots. The eyes are the focal point of the face. Lining up the eyes when you make zoom cuts helps anchor the viewer's gaze, making the cut less disorienting. To undo the crop to fill, make sure the clip with the crop is selected, then go up above the preview window and select the crop tool, then go over to the right and select the reset button and the crop is removed, and the clip goes back to its original size. All right, the second YouTube editing trick I'm gonna show you how to make here in iMovie is a variation of the zoom cut, but on the Mac, and that is the, the continuous zoom. zoom. Why? All right, here on the iMovie timeline, I'm gonna create the continuous zoom over here at this second marker in the timeline. I'll put the continuous zoom on this line of dialogue right here. On the Mac, you can't record the internal sound. Why? 
So I'll place the scrubber bar just before that line, zooming into the timeline to get a better look, using the keyboard shortcut, Command Plus. And with the scrubber bar in place, I'll split the clip using the keyboard shortcut, Command B. Then I'll scrub to where I want the continuous zoom to end, and hit Command B again to split the clip there. I'll select the newly created clip, then go up to the toolbar above the preview window and select the crop tool. And from the style section, this time select Ken Burns. The Ken Burns effect allows you to crop two areas of a clip, then smoothly transition between those two areas. And that's what these two boxes represent. The box labeled Start is the area of the clip where the crop will start. And the box labeled End is the area of the clip that will be shown when the crop ends. To adjust the size of the starting or ending crop boxes, you just click inside a box or on its label to select it, then click and drag on these corner handles to adjust the size of the box, and click and drag on the box itself to position it. I want the starting size of the clip to match the size of the previous clip to create a smooth transition into the zoom. So I'll make sure the start box encompasses the entire shot. I'll select the end box and adjust it to crop in a little on my face while maintaining decent framing. When I'm happy with the settings, I'll go up to the Crop Tools menu and select the blue check mark to lock in the Ken Burns crop. I'll scrub back a bit and play the clip to see how this looks. But on the Mac, you can't record the zoom starts. The sound. Why in this day and age? Now notice when the zoom clip ends, the shot jumps back to a wide framing. And that's because the clip after the continuous zoom doesn't have any cropping applied to it. Now that actually works as a zoom cut in this case, but what if you want to hold on that cropped in position for a few seconds? It's an easy fix. The first thing I'll do is select the clip with the Ken Burns effect. Then I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command C to copy the clip. Then I'll select the clip after the Ken Burns zoom. Then I'll go up to iMovie's top menu and select Edit, Paste, Adjustments, Crop. Or I could use a keyboard shortcut, Option Command R. This copies the Ken Burns effect from this clip onto this new clip. With this clip still selected, I'll go back up to the toolbar above the preview window, and you can see the Crop tool is highlighted, which means there is a cropping effect on this clip. I'll select the Crop tool to open the Crop Editor, and you can see the Ken Burns effect has indeed been copied over to this next clip. I'll go over to the right of the interface and select the Swap button to swap the start and end frames. Then I'll go back over and switch the Crop setting from Ken Burns to Crop to Fill. Crop to Fill uses the start frame for its crop, which is why we swapped the start and end frames. I'll lock in the crop using the blue check mark on the right of the interface. All right, let's play back from just before the continuous zoom. But on the Mac, you can't record the zoom starts. Sound. And when we cut to the next clip, the clip stays in that cropped in position. Nice. Now you probably don't want to stay cropped in for the rest of this second clip you'll probably want to go back to its original framing at some point. To do that, I'll scrub to the spot where I want to change back to the original framing. I'll do that after this line of dialogue right here. I'll hit Command B to split the clip, then select this newly created clip on the end. I'll go back and open the Crop tool, and I'll just hit Reset to go back to the original framing then hit the blue check mark to lock in the change. I'll play back this edit, and you can see the cropped in shot jumps back or does a zoom cut back to the original framing. Let's play back this entire sequence to see what we've got. You've been able to do that for years, but on the Mac, you can't record the internal sound. Why? in this day and age. Now, in order to record internal sound on the Mac, you need... I know the steps seem cumbersome at first, but once you create these zoom techniques a few times, they'll become second nature, and 
you'll have two more tricks up your sleeve to make your YouTube videos more interesting. And if you're looking for more ways to make your videos more interesting, have a look at these videos on my channel.